Hey, what a great crowd. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Man, you guys look fired up. Well, before I introduce our very special guest, I want to say a few things. We have 193 days till elections in November. 193 days. And this election is going to be about a very clear choice for the folks in New Hampshire. Whether or not we're going to go back to the failed economic policies of the past, or whether we are going to go forward and revitalize the middle class and rebuild a working economy for the 21st century on a firm foundation. Right? Now, all of my Republican opponents, all of my Republican opponents want New Hampshire to take a U-turn back into the ditch that the Republicans drove us into. Right? I mean, that's why I say politics, uh, politics is a lot like driving a car. You want to go backwards, you put it in R. You want to go forward, you put it in D. Right? And we've got a very clear example. We've got a very clear example going on right now. Because this week down in Washington, there's a debate going on about regulating the Wall Street banks who gambled your college savings, your retirement funds, your 401ks, gambled this economy and lost. And then taxpayers were supposed to pay the bill, right? And the Republicans are stonewalling reform. They're stonewalling down there. And my Republican opponents, well, we'll talk about them in a minute, but we know that we've got to stop this from ever happening again. We need transparency, accountability. It's time to hold Wall Street bankers accountable for what they did. <laughs> Middle class families need it, small businesses need it. Everybody in this country knows that we have got to have rules of the road, except apparently the folks I'm running against in New Hampshire. Ovid LaMontagne, he's against reforming Wall Street. Bill Binney, well, <laughs> Mr. Benny says, the problem is that we're vilifying Wall Street. <laughs> vilifying Wall Street? They vilified themselves. We're not vilifying Wall Street. We're trying to fix Wall Street so the economy works for the American people. <laughs> and Kelly Ayotte. <laughs> the sound of silence. The shroud of silence has come over Ms. Ayotte. Not a word. She hasn't said a word about how she's going to create jobs and fix the economy. And not a word about where she stands on regulatory reform for Wall Street. I think New Hampshire deserves a United States Senator who will stand up for the middle class, stand up for working families, stand up for small business, and stand up against the corporate special interests that are taking our country by the throat into the ditch. It's time to have a Senator to stand up and say where you stand. What is she waiting for? Is she waiting, is she waiting for marching orders from Mitch McConnell? Is she waiting for a memo from Judd Gregg? Come on, Kelly. Tell us where you stand. So, your choices in this election are going to be very simple. It takes me back to when I was a prosecutor. I know a little something about accountability. I was a special prosecutor on the biggest white collar fraud case that New Hampshire had ever had at the time. I know something about accountability. It's time to hold Wall Street accountable. That's what we're going to do. And it's why independence and integrity are so important. It's what, it's what David Souter talked about. Independence and integrity. That's why I stood up against Wall Street. I voted against the bailout. It's why I stood up to cut wasteful pork barrel spending, right? It's why I stood up to the corporate special interests and filed a constitutional amendment to deal with the Citizens United case so we could keep democracy and not be drowned out by corporate special interests. I'm not going to be able to do this alone. Right now, I'm down a little in the polls. When we know about polls in New Hampshire, it's a long way between here and November. And I've got a secret weapon. I've got you all. 
And together, when November comes, the poll that counts, you know where we're going to be. We are going to win this in November. <laughs> and by way of introduction, now by way of introduction to my special guest, I remember a long time ago, July of 2007, when I endorsed a long shot candidate for the presidency of the United States. Somebody who talked about the audacity of hope and change we can believe in. Somebody who was down 30 points in the polls when I endorsed him. And today is the President of the United States. And one of the people who helped make that happen is our guest. Please welcome David Pluff. Throughout the campaign, uh, the president, myself, David Axelrod, uh, would get uh, amazing phone calls and emails from Congressman Hodes with terrific advice. And it was always grounded in his belief about how to move this country forward and to be faithful to our grassroots campaign. And he understands these things uh, in his gut. And that's why I'm up here today, because I think the country in this state needs this man in the United States Senate. And Paul Hodes, when he first ran for the House, throughout his tenure in the House and now in the Senate, he's led on these things. And these aren't just talking points to him. It's what he believes in his gut and what he's doing on reform and transparency and earmarks. This is what we need to do as a party and as a country. He's going to continue. That change he ran on in 2006, the change he helped us bring to the country in 2008, he's going to do that in the United States Senate. And this is, we need more people like this in our politics and our party who want to open up government and bring it back to the people. So he's going to be a terrific addition to the Senate. And by the way, it takes character and courage and integrity because the positions he takes always aren't popular in Washington. They aren't, okay? Because sometimes they're the last to get the message there. But he gets it, and he's going to lead in these issues. And he already has provided enormous leadership to make sure this country moves forward. And what I love about Paul Hodes, and again, this is in too short supply in Washington, and he shares this trait with the President of the United States. He is much more focused on providing leadership focused on the next generation, not just the next election. Okay? And we've seen a great display on financial reform. Paul Hodes is led on this issue. He understands that we cannot allow what happened on Wall Street happen again in this country. Consumers have to be protected. Okay? But The Senate Minority Leader, who would be the Majority Leader if they won back the Senate. The House Minority Leader, who would be the Speaker if they went back to House. What are they doing? They're opposing reform with everything they've got. And worse than that, they're going to Wall Street with a tin cup saying, hey, big bankers, we're the ones trying to slow down reform or stop it. We don't think you should reimburse the taxpayers. We don't think there should be any restrictions on your excessive pay. Okay? This is a great example of the choice in this election. Paul Hodes has cut taxes for more people in New Hampshire than it's ever done federally before in the history of this country. Okay? Now, we'll see what his opponents have to say about that. There's a big choice on taxes. You want to talk about taxes? Let's not run from that. Let's have it. He wants to cut taxes for the middle class and small businesses. They want to keep giving tax breaks to the biggest corporations, tax cuts that ship jobs overseas, and the very wealthiest without paying it. Let's have a discussion about taxes. So we want to have a discussion about spending. This is someone who has fought pork barrel spending, who wants more transparency, and is going to make sure we get the deficit under control. And with your help, that's going to happen. So let's go out there and have a great election, and let's send Paul Ho to the United States Senate. <laughs>